Good morning, everyone. Patrick Chester, Jatin Patel here from Patel and Chester, bringing you some updates on the Consolidated Appropriations Act and how it's going to affect individuals and businesses. It's February 2021. We'll have three videos for you today. Uh, one, which will be talking about some frequently asked questions related to the stimulus payments, how they'll affect your tax returns. Uh, one related to the employee retention tax credit changes and opportunities there. And this video, uh, an update on the PPP loans and the economic injury loans and those programs. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right in to the changes that have affected PPP forgiveness. That's been a big topic for business clients. Uh, Jatin, would you cover those changes for us? Yes, we've got some good and exciting news for you guys because, you know, our last video we talked about telling everyone to hold off on your loans, reach out to your congressmen, senators, and things like that, and see if they're still going to make the PPP loan forgiveness taxable. Well, the good news is, is based on the Consolidated Appropriations Act passed on December 27th, um, Congress was very clear. They did not want the loan to be considered income. They did not want the forgiveness to reduce expenses. So the good news so far is that um, the forgiveness will not be taxable on your returns for the year 2020 or 2021 um, regarding the PPP loan round one. So that I think is the biggest piece of legislation for the PPP side that could have been passed um, and we were hoping for. So I'm glad that Congress came through for us on this act that was passed on December 22nd. Um, Patrick, the one thing that the clients need to know about is how does this affect the state? Absolutely, because not every state conforms to what the federal government does. And that's going to be a potential problem going forward is each state that doesn't conform, there's about 30 of them that don't automatically follow what the IRS or what Congress passes for federal law in the state code. So they, those states will each have to make the same adjustment to their tax code. They will each have to pass a law that says they are not going to tax PPP forgiveness. Otherwise, the default will be that they do. Some states have already done this. A lot of states already have. South Carolina is one of them. Our state passed a law uh, back in, I believe it was November of last year, that said whatever the federal government does is what we're going to do. So they made it open-ended, very easy. They don't have to do anything new. Other states have not done that yet. Uh, North Carolina is an example, as of last I checked. Uh, they still have not passed a law that says they are going to conform with the IRS in that regard. So depending on which state you were in, be very careful and aware that even though the IRS is not taxing it, if they don't make the right changes to the law, the states may still tax it as forgiveness. So that's just something to be very aware of going into tax season. You can check with your own state on what those rules are, whichever states you're operating in. And with that, Patrick, I think while we go through this tax season, um, be patient with the preparers because we need our softwares to update for that. And, um, you know, the IRS has said that e will be open February 12th, but as we've seen it so far, our tax software is not um, capable of, of um, calculating for the PPP loan and forgiveness as of yet. Um, so that's one thing that we need to kind of Absolutely. Wait yes, that, that's that's waiting on the IRS for a lot of it. They they haven't even given the instructions on how they want it done yet. So it has to trickle down to get to us. And th there will probably be some delays even beyond February 12th. That's usual for a change this big. That takes them a while to get all the forms ready to go. So yes, as Jatin said, just be patient. We'll, we're getting them done as fast as we can. And it's a waiting game on what the states and the feds do a lot of times. Um, Jatin, do you want to talk as well about, we've talked about the PPP changes on just the forgiveness side. What about the economic injury grants? Which we right, so the SBA one, ones. Yeah, they, one of the things we talked about early, early on back in April about people applying for the economic grant, the $10,000, up to $10,000 for the first 10 employees. Um, we said, we recommended that people don't apply for it. Um, looking back on it, 
unfortunately, I think we may have been incorrect, but we'll get into that part of the video um, later. However, the December Act, what it did was it said that they will not reduce the forgiveness of your loan. So for instance, if your company had $7,000 worth of EIG grant and you had a $50,000 PPP loan, for everyone who was approved before December 27th, they reduce the amount of loan going forward. And we've already seen bankers, people who have given, gotten the forgiveness after January of this year, they're not having their loan reduced. So that is something that has changed. And one of the things that um, we don't know how the government's going to handle it is how are they going to take the loans that they've already reduced by the EIG and get that money back to the um, taxpayer or the business. So that's one of the open-ended questions that we have that we're not 100% sure of how the, the, the money will be given to those people who had their loans reduced. All right, and then we covered that. The, Next major topic with the legislation is the round two of funding for PPP. It's come back, it's gonna be available for application through March 31st, but they've changed some of the rules on us on eligibility amounts. Um, what, what are the new rules that people should be aware of? Yeah, I think there's, I think really there's a few things that people need to know. Some of them will affect locally, some of them won't. Um, main thing is, they reduce the amount of employees from 500 to 300. The maximum loan amount is 2 million as opposed to the 10 million. Um, but two big things that people need to know um, when calculating the loan. Number one is you must have used the entire balance of the first PPP loan on eligible expenses. You must have used the money. You do not have to have applied for forgiveness or been forgiven. I want to make sure I repeat that you do not have to have applied for forgiveness or the first loan has doesn't necessarily require that it's been forgiven to apply for round two. With that being said, there's one big change. Um, in order to apply for the loan, you must have had one calendar quarter in 2020. The gross receipts must have dropped more than 25%. For instance, if my first, third, and fourth quarter did not drop less than 75% of the gross wages of the prior year, but my second quarter did, you're eligible because you only need one quarter to apply. The other thing to know is it's still two and a half times the payroll. And you could use either the 2019 or the 2020 payroll when calculating. The other thing is, is they've got this NAI, CS code 72, and that's mainly for your hospitality, entertainment businesses, movie theaters, um, hotels, restaurants, basically food accommodations, entertainment and, and things. They will actually get three and a half times their monthly payroll. So those are the, I think the major changes that we need to know is up to 2 million, um, the, the three and a half times, and making sure you have a reduction of at least 25% or greater in one of any four of the counter quarters. The other thing I want to mention about the PPP loan and the forgiveness was when you check that box of needing the money um, on the loans, uh, question number, I think 46 on the SBA website has stated that there's a safe harbor stating that any company that applies for less than $2 million amongst all its affiliates will de be deemed necessary to have needed the money for PPP. So I think that's one of the things that people haven't may mainly been talking about, but a few of our clients have asked, when I sign this box or I initial this box, am I deemed necessary? If you're under the 2 million, you can be safe falling under the safe harbor rule. Um, that's the gist of the PPP round two. So go to your bankers and see what you need or call us, we have a banker that can help you apply for it also. Um, one of the things that we talked about and touched on earlier was the EIDL and um, how it affected the forgiveness. 
but they have actually opened up the economic recovery, the emergency economic injury um, grant through this new act. So Patrick, do you wanna go through kind of the changes or the updates that have happened through this act? Sure, so in this act, when they brought back the PPP, they also brought back the EIDF, which had closed previously. This is the one that you would apply directly through the SBA website rather than through a local banker. The EIDL loan program has been reopened and it's going to be available through the end of 2021 to apply for. Eligibility rules, uh, you have to have 500 or fewer employees. You have to have been in business uh, before February 15th of 2020, so newer businesses will not be eligible. And the proceeds from the loan must be used for working capital and operating expenses. That's a pretty clear uh, restriction to be aware of. You can't use it to refinance debt, although they will refinance other SBA loans through it and bring it under the same program. You cannot use it to consolidate or refinance bank debt. You cannot use it to purchase new capital assets. Cannot buy vehicles, cannot buy land, cannot buy buildings, equipment, anything like that that you would normally go to a bank to get a loan for. You may not use your EIDL funds for. They're not allowed to compete with banks, basically. Uh, as with the last time, the rate is going to be fixed, 3.75% interest and no payments in the first year of this loan. Um, as an option that is available out there for those that need additional funding, not forgivable, you will have to pay this loan back and they will have other covenants within the loan that you will have to conform to. Uh, so just be aware when you're looking for this, or this money as an option, that there are other restrictions that you will want to look at and consider, are they worth it for my business that don't exist for things like the PPP? As part of this, Jatin mentioned, there was the grant with the original application of up to $10,000 economic uh, injury grant that they were giving that was just pure money that's not going to be repaid, no loan. And originally, as mentioned, was going to go against the PPP and reduce your PPP loan forgiveness. That part's gone. The grant itself is back as well, but it's been reworked. It's not the same thing. It's called the targeted uh, EIDL advance now. It works very similarly to the original. You apply for your EIDL loan and they consider whether you are eligible for this grant. Now, first run, everyone was eligible. It was $1,000 per employee up to that 10,000. Now it's different. It's just a flat $10,000. They're not doing any kind of calculation with it based on your number of employees, but they are restricting who can qualify for it more heavily. Main restrictions, you have to have under 300 employees. It's 500 to apply for the loan, 300 for the grant. You have to have suffered a 30% loss in income for an eight week period in 2020 versus 2019. And you must be located in what they've designated as low income communities. That's a federal designation on a area of the country that they say, you, this area is where we're targeting for these loans. Uh, there are places you can look it up on the federal websites, whether you qualify as a population census track, and they will tell you whether you're in a low income community or not. Uh, so your banker will, or not your banker, but SBA will also be able to tell you that information when you apply. They will look that up automatically and see if you qualify based on that. With this grant, this $10,000, you can qualify for it if you received the advance back in April, assuming you qualify, meet the other qualification requirements up to 10,000, but it won't double dip. So if you got 10,000 from the original uh, economic injury grant back in last April, May, you won't get anything here. But if you've got 5,000 there because you have five employees, you can get the other 5,000 to catch you up to the 10,000 in the grant. So it's an option that's out there, something to be aware of. You can get the grant and not go through with the loan. So for people who did not apply back in April, when we were not encouraging it as much because it would have impacts on your forgiveness, and the PPP seemed the better option at the time. If you passed on it then, or you've got a very small amount, it may be worth checking and see, do I tick these other boxes and qualify? Because it is no obligation money, does not affect your forgiveness on PPP 
round one or two and is just another funding option out there that can help businesses in need. That's the highlights for the programs uh, for the EIDL, the Economic Injury Grants, and the PPP changes. Um, Jutan, is there anything else, any other questions yeah, think, you've been hearing or anything we haven't touched on yet? Yeah, for closing, I think the big thing is, you know, for the forgiveness, um, the simplified form for loans that were, that were supposed to be for under 50, thousand have been increased to 150 and what we've noticed is the simplified form is much easier than filing the short form or the full form um, mainly because it doesn't require you to break out owner compensations and other other forms of compensations so check with your banks because what we've noticed is some of the banks haven't set up their systems to allow for you to file the um, short form or the easy form for loans under fifty thousand dollars, of and haven't re increased it to the one hundred fifty limit that was passed on this loan. Um, Patrick, talk about real quick about the um, the restrictions and the um, loan documents and things of that for the EIDL because I think people are applying for it, but I'm not sure they understand what they're they're signing up for. So if there's any quick one or two things that you'd like to mention before, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So it's something we've noticed as businesses bringing in these forms for the EIDL uh, loans that they got last year. If you received one, check your loan documents for the covenants. As we've seen some in there uh, about restricting how you disperse money to owners or give bonuses, saying that you can't do that without SBA approval. And that would be a big deal for businesses. So that's something, check your loan documents carefully. That may be a standard that's in every single one we don't know how they're going to enforce that yet. But if you were a business owner that suspended your salary, you may not be able to reinstate it without SBA approval. You may not be able to distribute money. So if you're used to using distributions from your business to help pay your personal expenses uh, in conjunction with your salary, you may not be able to do that without SBA approval. Uh, they also have reporting requirements that you may need to be aware of. So check, again, check your documents for that. Are they going to require you to submit your financial statements annually within two months, three months of year end? We've seen some indications that that may be the case in some of these loan documents. So just be aware both on the run if you already got them and as you're considering the new one that these requirements are out there and they could potentially be a big negative or something that you need to be aware of now if you've already got it and be preparing to meet the compliance for. I think that's a pretty good wrap up. If there's any specific questions people may have, we're always here to help, but unfortunately there may not be guidance out there yet with the IRS and the US Treasury and the SBA. So we're looking for that as things um, get up to date, we will let you know, we'll either do videos or send out um, e -blast, email blast for that information. But we thank you again for uh, the, um, watching the videos and working with us through this changing times of, of PPP, EIDL, and the way the stimulus work.